Welcome back, everyone, to the Flow Track Podcast. I'm Kevin, joined remotely by Gordon, who is still in PA, getting ready for the Penn Relays, which is coming up on Thursday. Has his Phillies sweatshirt on. Gordon, how you doing? Doing good. I'm excited for you to come visit me in mm. Pennsylvania. When do you leave? Wednesday? Leave on Wednesday. Of course, meet starts on Thursday. So excited to get out there. Um, we checked in with you last time about the mood on the ground as it pertained to pen relays. I, the excitement is building, I'm guessing. Yes, it's building. It's buzzing. It's humming. Lots mm. of going on. Sixers mm. sweep the nets. Go on to the second round. You got the NFL draft coming up. You got Devin Allen, Philadelphia Eagle, doing a press conference for Penn Relays. He's going <laughs> to be on the track. You have the Phillies putting it on, putting it together. Almost going to get to 500. We're going to go to the oh, Phillies yeah. game on Wednesday. So the town is buzzing for Philadelphia sports, and we're ready to go. And it's going to be good. And I can't wait for Thursday at 9 a.m. for the start of the high school boys four by eight prelims. It's gonna be fun. Yeah. Kick off just an insane three days at Penn. Uh also should mention for fans of the show, longtime fans of the show, producer Colt's last show today. I wanted to bring him in studio, but then realized he has to produce the show, so that really wouldn't work. Like I couldn't have him sitting in yeah. your seat and produce. Uh Colt, what are your emotions right now? You know, it's been a it's been a rough weekend. Lost oh. my job, had to watch the Timberwolves. <laughs> Um, it was rainy, but that kind of fit the mood. Oh, um, you know, it's been a fun two years with the show, but moving on to different things and excited to see what you guys keep doing. A uh, favorite moment or moments or least favorite. Ooh, I think the, uh, cross country draft was really fun. When I went all yeah. big 12. Yes. Um, performed surprisingly well. Um, the super shoes debate always was fun. Oh man, that's how long that, we've been to yeah. Super Shoes are an afterthought now, but it's incredible to think that you were around when we were still yelling about that all those years. <laughs> all right. Yep. Way back. Way back. In the Halcyon days. Uh, all right. Favorite member of the show. Ooh, Travis. Okay. That's a solid pick. Solid pick. Um all right. favorite current member of the show. <laughs> uh uh, Kevin, you'll understand this. I'm going Gordon. It'll break his heart if I... If yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yes, it would else. break my heart, so that's a good, good answer, good answer. The fact that you knew I was mature enough to handle it tells me all I need to know, Colt. That's why we love you. Um, all right, well, let's get on with the show, even though we're going to be doing it, thinking about Colt's last show. Man, hitting the buttons one last time. Um, what do we got, Gordon? We got London recap. We got Pen Relays preview. We have... Uh, Asama Asinga beating Noah Lyles in 100. Shrika Jackson running 1082. Let's start with London, though. London Marathon, it delivered. Men's and women's races were incredible. We're going to start with the women's race, though, because Safan Hassan got the win and did it in the most Safan Hassan way you could possibly think. It looked for a while that she wouldn't even finish this race. Then it looked... For a while, like she would finish, but she probably wouldn't be with the leaders at the end. But she pulled it all together. She managed to get back with the leaders in the final 20 so minutes of the race. Came down to a finishing kick. And who are you going to pick in a finishing kick? Gordon, the 1500 meter world champion? <laughs> I think that's a pretty good choice. Uh, she did it, runs 218.33. Time was. Not even important here. This was just an amazing race, an amazing comeback by Safan Hassan. Someone who's just, you look at the whole, whole career, it's just the unconventional is what she does. She does things that we don't think are possible. Doha, 2019 World Championships. No one can have the range at the same time to win a 1,500 and a 10,000. Like that's just not, that's not possible. Those two, those two events are too different. She's not going to be able to be at the best, uh, at the highest level she needs to be for both. What does she do? She does it and shows it with ease. Comes back, Olympics. She says she's going to triple. We joke about, hey, she could probably triple based on what she did in Doha. But we're like, you're not actually going to do that. No one could actually handle the, the toll of all three races. And she comes away with three medals and two golds. And that brings me to Sunday, 
where you're like, all right, she's a 156, 800 meter runner. She's got all these incredible PRs. She had the world record in the 10K for a little bit. But moving up to marathon's different. And she stops about an hour into the race. And we've seen this before, Gordon. If someone stops in the middle of a race and a gap forms between them and the rest of the pack, what do you think the success rate is that for them to winning that race, typically? Well, I know it's not 0% because we have seen it before. One, one. Notably, uh, Des Linden. It's, oh, oh true. she didn't stop, but she, Bathroom. she came back to, Bathroom. with, with Shalane Flanagan during uh, Boston. But um, it's not a high percentage, very low. If we're looking at the uh, New York Times needle, it's yes. on the, the, the 0 to 1% range. Yeah, so she stops. She stretches for a bit. She had issues with the bottles, too. And I'll even say, okay, her coming back and joining the group, low probability for anybody in that spot. But for a debutante, I would say it's even lower, wouldn't you? They were talking about, hey, she's near the Elite Athlete Hotel. This will probably be a spot where she'd pull off. Everybody was thinking. The odds are greater on a DNF than on her finishing. And then she just was lurking. She got back in the race. She's running by herself, which is really hard to do for long stretches in a marathon. And you just see her in the background of these shots, and she gets the lead. You know, the, the lead is 20, 25 seconds. That lead packs ahead of her. And then she's just lurking, and then she's just lurking. And then about the two-hour mark, she's back with him. She clawed her way back. And then with about five minutes remaining, Gordon, I thought to myself, there's 0% chance she's losing this race. It went from basically 0% that she's finishing to 0% that she's going to lose. Because if we've seen this before, and it, you just transported yourself to a track, and you thought, all right, Safanasan looks comfortable with a group of other athletes at the latter stages of a race. What happens? She wins. She wins. That's what happened. Yeah. You could also argue maybe because it was her debut, the fear of the final five miles wasn't really in her head because mm. she didn't know what it was. She hasn't been through it, putting a hard effort. So she probably was super naive and kind of treated like a track race. There's times in track races where you fall off, you might, you're, you have to fix your shoe or something, and you just get back onto the back of the, the not the corral, but the, the line of women in the 10K or something like that. Yeah, yeah. She probably was just like thinking it was like a track race. Oh, just get back up to the pace, and then we're good. And then the race starts when the kick goes. She kind of treated a 26-mile race like a 25-lap race. Mm -hmm. And instead of one lap, it was one mile each time. Uh, but I was impressed. It made me think, like, we now have back-to-back -back track women winning the marathon. Yeah. And I was like, ooh, imagine that finish if Helen O'Beary was there with Stefan Hassan. Like, how would that type of final 800 mm -hmm. go when you know <laughs> – Barry yeah. coming off of a silver medal in the 5K. Hassan, you know what she does from 15 to 10K. You'd be like, whoa, we're getting track on, on the roads, which is mm -hmm. fun. So it got me excited for the future between her and Helen from last week. But yeah, I was surprised. But then at the same time, we saw what she did in 2019. We saw what she did in 2021. Mm -hmm. We probably shouldn't be surprised. The She's really good at doing things on odd years, 2019, 2021, and now 2023. The best plan for this field to beat Hassan, regardless of whether or not she was hurting early on or not, would have been a quick pace. And they went out quick, but yeah. they didn't go out as – they weren't running world record pace. It was 216 and change early on. I think, and especially once she stepped off, they needed to hit the gas. They needed to separate themselves even more. Now, hindsight is twenty twenty because at the time, you're thinking, oh, okay, well, it's her first marathon. She's, we don't need to worry about her. She, no one is doing this on purpose. This is not a strategic point to stand there and stretch your, your hips 12 miles into a marathon. Nobody's doing that. But you looking, looking back on it now, you think, man, you can't let her hang around. You just can't let her get in the mix because she's obviously just going to gain in confidence as she goes along, and that's exactly what she did. Now, we had talked before about reassessing the – Power rankings for the women's marathon, but we did you do a ranking? Now. We can't now. I can't. Oh, we, no, it's... we can't. I did. I did it. I I made my ranking. What is it? Who is it? Thirteen deep. Thirteen deep. Do you, are you being number serious? thirteen? No, I have it. I, have the I Excel can't tell sheet. if you're I'm serious. At it right now. Oh, okay. I'm serious. I have the Excel sheet. I'm looking at it right now. All right. Far be it from me to interrupt your spreadsheet. Go ahead. Yeah. So here's the thing. You know me names. 
I'm going to struggle with names. So I'm going to need you to kind of like finish the name for me when we go. So it's kind of clearer. You want to just send it to me? You want to send it to me? No, I'm not going to send it to you. I want okay. you to be, kind of see it in real time. Okay. Number 13, Sharon Locchetti. Number 12. Okay. Now this is, no, this is current. Mm hmm like ranking not all time ranking it's current ranking right yeah it's about what have you done for me lately yeah number 13 is sharon lochetti okay number 12 edna kiplagat number 11 yala mizurf yuhula yuhula thank you okay. for helping me out yeah number 10 tigis asifa i just asifa okay i just asifa again apologize number nine gemmer Selassie. Okay. Eight, Jabkos guy. Seven, Wanjiri, Wanjiru. Okay. Six, Sal Peter. Mm hmm. Five, Helen O'Berry. Four, Safan Hassan. Three, Jep Negic. Two, Kos guy. One, Jep Chircher. That's my ranking. Okay, interesting. So, Kos guy made it. Less than a mile. She dropped out, but world record won a bunch. Jip Chichir, good pick. In this race, she got third. third. And her record's been really good. Like, very, yeah. you know, three wins. Of, Recently? Of wins. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. you go, it, it, the wins go even farther back to the Olympics. So, solid pick there. I actually, I mean, where Bariso, I think you should have on here. Um, Hasn't won. She won Valencia. That's not a major. Well, win a major. Get on my list. Kelvin that was my, that was, So I only rank people who've won majors in the past three years. Valencia is essentially a major at this point. She ran 2 uh, 14.58, and then she was good in, in Boston. I would have her. She def I'd probably have her okay, actually. I might have her right around the Hassan Obiri tier. But this is actually pretty. I, I did, this is actually not bad. Good? Yeah, Thank it's you. not I bad. Just didn't, I get that she was good. I just didn't include Valencia. Win I just wanted to have a cutoff. Be like, I'm only including people who've won majors. So yeah. that was my cutoff. The other person I put in there would probably be Yeshina. Uh, she had a tough break, you know, falling it um, in Boston, runner up. But yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. I just, I wonder now, I, and I give you credit because I didn't want to do the assignment on that one. I just got a headache when I started thinking about it because how do you, compare Koskai to Safan Hassan. Just that one example just shows you the perils with this situation. Koskai well, dropped out. Hassan won. But Koskai is a world record holder. Has won a bunch of majors before. Hassan, first one. We don't know if she's going to do it. It's just very hard. It's very hard. But I agree. I think Perez uh, Shepchirchir, even though she got third, is number one right now because the parity is... Incredible. Yeah. And also not in that list, uh, Dababa, who struggled in this race, uh, Ayana, who, who finished seventh in this race. Yeah. It's a tough, tough, yeah. tough 13 to make. Tough 13 to make. The big thing make. is I put Hassan and Obiri four and five. Like, I think they're on my starting five. And the reason why is like, yes, they only have one marathon under their belt, but they're one and well, one got and two. oh. Obiri's got two. Okay, so Obiri is two. Yeah. But, for they're also coming off track seasons. Their track history is recent. Yeah. Well, Barry was literally the second fastest 5K runner in the world last year. And Hassan, the past outside of 20, 2021 and 2019, was like dominating. So, yeah. I just think that their track, kind of in a weird way, is helping their marathon resume because yeah. while they were winning golds and silvers in track, these other women weren't all just winning golds and silvers in the marathoning. So if you're getting, if you're the best in the world at what you're doing, you should get credit for it. And yeah. so Hassan O'Berry should get credit for those track performances. Uh, Cliff brings up a good point. Good day, two sixteen forty nine, fast debut, and that was at Valencia. And she lost to to Bariso. So I, I I would probably include her too in the top thirteen. But in general, this is a good list to start with. And if you had all of them in one race. I'm sure it would be completely <laughs> mixed up and turned upside down by the time you got to the finish. No one would feel confident about picking that race. The person, though, that you'd feel 
good about is just just from the perspective of she is going to find a way to win, you feel like, and it's some of its recency bias is Stefan Hassan. Now, I wonder, what does she do now? What does she do in the rest of 2023? They mentioned she's still doing track training. And then the Thank question you. returned to 2024. What does she do Marath- for the Paris Olympics? Does she go to the marathon? Does she do multiple marathon events? 10K. Marathon and 10K, you think, double? Yeah, I mean, that's been done enough to... For, that's not Ooh. it. Here's the thing. Marathon 15, that would be fun. Yeah, do that. so that's the thing. Marathon 10K has been done enough and Safana San's range is crazy enough to where that would just, that's assumed that she would do that. Like we, that's the minimum that we would predict. Yeah, it would have to be like 510 marathon or, you know, 15 marathon, just something bizarre. I want her. I don't think she's going to, for the record, I don't think she's going to do the 15 in marathon. That that would be cool though. How great would it be if like the, the marathon was in between the heats of the 15 and the final. So she does like 15 prelim, Runs a marathon and then 15 comes back. semifinals, 15 yeah. finals. Yeah. That's what I want. Listen, we knew she could go 800 to, f- to half marathon. It's n- not a surprise, but it is a surprise because the half is so much different than the full. So she's. <laughs> At she's this doing trajectory, exactly. ultra marathoners, watch out. Yeah. Yeah. So she'll probably. Trail running? She'll stop for be there. 40 minutes or something and then just keep going and then beat everybody. I just. <laughs> I, I just, you, you get to a point with, with her, you're just like, what? This is just, it's just, yeah, literally unbelievable. Like, you, you, you can't believe, like, oh, man, is this, is, this is how it's going to be. It doesn't, like, the normal conventions don't apply to her in running, and they don't apply to her in the marathon either, because you don't, you don't have all those things happen to you, and all that stuff doesn't happen, and then end in a win, in the same way that you don't try to run three events at, a, at, at an Olympic Games, and you don't try to run a, a 1,500 and then a 10,000. Like you just don't, you don't do that. You don't, you don't skip an event in between just because the schedule is inconvenient. And that just doesn't, that doesn't work. But none of that stuff really matters to her. She just rolls with it. She goes out there and she just runs. It doesn't really matter. Moving to the men. Uh, we were kind of putting a lot of focus on the women's race, obviously, with Hassan. Yeah debut but kelvin kip tum kip tum tum or tum kip tum kip tum yeah tum. kip tum kip Chogi, i don't i mean kip Chogi's the goat and he will never not be the goat but to think that like no one's ever gonna i thought there was a moment when i was like it when i was thinking no one's ever gonna ever run faster than kip Chogi because he's so good he's breaking two He's breaking the world record multiple times. No one's ever going to break that. But I low-key, Calvin Kiptoom's going to break the world record in two years. Like, yeah. I have like 80% confidence that's happening. I think enough people have run. Now, this was the second fastest time in history, but he did it with this 59-45 second half. That. He went sub-60 in the second half. But enough people have run now the quick times that you think it may not be kept to him, but someone is going to, someone's going to get it. He was only 16 seconds off the world record. The question would be, does anybody get to 159.40? And if they do, does it require another special exhibition type of attempt? Or are we going to see that, you know, not maybe in, in the next five years, but in the next 10 years, are we going to see that in a regulation race? Here's the thing though. And I want to talk about more about Kiptum in a second with Kipchoge. Obviously, we get caught up on times because he broke a barrier, even if it was in an unofficial capacity and broke the world record. But the thing with Kipchoge is the wins and the dominance sure. for all those years. And that's why you get super excited about Kip to him. He's won two marathons in a row. Two marathons in a row. He's had two good years. Kipchoge had 10. So if we're still talking about Kip to him in the year 2032, then that's, that's a big accomplishment. But that, that's, that's the equivalent to what Kipchoge is doing. And maybe we will. Maybe he will be like that. But Kipchoge, maybe. a lot of people have good two or three or four years. A lot of people run fast times. For Kipchoge, it's the, the combination of the two and then extending the, the dominance to 10 years. Maybe Kipchoge is Tom Brady and Kiptum is Patrick Mahomes. Yes, you don't have the career that Tom Brady has, but you're in route. 
early on. It takes a while to get the second 80% of that career going. Mm -hmm. First 20% might be the easiest part. It's it harder as you get older and more pressure and more expectations that Kipchoge was able to literally be flawless. So, yeah, I mean, Brady lost, know. though. Brady lost. And I know it's a different team game versus individual, but it's like Kipchoge Kipchoge lost. Three times he's had three bad out of, out of twenty, including the exhibition races. Like that. How many times did Brady lose the Super Bowl? He's like six. No, but I mean, he didn't. There, there was like gaps. There was gaps in between when he was in the Super Bowl and when he wasn't. We Kipchoge. He's true, true. It's true. it's it's, it, it's really remarkable what he's done, and it's it sets him apart from everybody else. Now, Kip to him though. <laughs> At ninety minutes, just decided he was done with this field. He's like, all right. He treated everybody else in the field like pacers. There were also pacers in the field, which he treated like pacers. But then he treated the, his competitors like pacers. Hey, you're going to get me through 90 minutes, and then I'm going to rip off a really fast last half hour. See you guys later. I mean, he started to push at halfway. That's, the pace got squeezed down then. But you just look at the margin. Look, He put about a minute on Cam War in the last 2K. I mean, he just took off and did not look back at all. Like The, the margin of victory... By the end, almost three minutes over Jeffrey Cam Moore, three and a half minutes over Tamarat Tola. He was just over it at that point. And you could go back and find it a few seconds here, a few seconds there. I'm sure you could do that with the world record. But for this race, yeah, it's just like if he starts moving maybe a little bit earlier, maybe at 11 miles, he starts to push, or even he, he expends more energy at, from 30K to 35K or something. Yeah, you're looking at the world record. Definitely. 16 seconds is not much. He went from up. I don't think. That, he was up 28 seconds at 35K, and by 40K, he was up a minute 50. It was. I mean, it's a 120. He put 120 on people in, in 5K. Yeah. The reason why I'm super bullish on him. Bullish. I mean, it's confident, right? That's what bullish mm -hmm. means. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The reason why I'm super confident is, is that second half, the 59 sub 60 second half on a fast pace. That is not normal. That is Kipchoge, Kipchoge esque type running. Yeah. And we may see, you know, we're never going to see another Kipchoge, but we now have another guy we can kind of lean on and be like, if Kipchoge's final two years are upon us. We can look confident to the second half of the 2020s to maybe like, hey, maybe Kip Toom can become a guy that every time he comes to the track or the roads, you think he's going to win, and you think, hey, maybe something special will happen. Well, and now there's two guys that we want to see race against Kipchoge because you want to see Evans Chabet again versus Kipchoge. And everybody started to anoint him after Boston. Like, Hold on, one race. Let's figure this out. And Because you can't exclude Kip Toom. No. So regardless of what happens in the fall i think we're gonna now they could all spread out someone could go to berlin someone could go to chicago someone could go to new york or maybe they go non marathon maybe kiptum goes back to valencia there's there's more options out there than there are runners that we want to see so there's the world where they don't run against each other all of them avoid each other i would guess chibet would go back to new york try to defend his title kiptum valencia which would mean Kipchoge could take those guys on or he could go to Chicago or he could go to Berlin. I want to see him take those guys on, but I don't know what, other than the getting all the world marathon majors and going to New York, I don't know what, what his plans would be. And we've talked about before, he, need, he needs to get that qualifying time as of right now for the Olympics. And how, how, how good is the Kenyan Olympic marathon team right now, you think? Pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. <laughs> If all this ends with him not making the Olympic team for Kenya, it's going to be really disappointing. <laughs> It'll be classic uh, sport shooting itself in the foot. Yeah. I mean, I also, I'm against the fact that I think the Olympics should not be three per country. I think it should be the top eight, top it should 16, be, top 32. It should be three per country plus event. a Kipchoge. Okay. If you have a Kipchoge sure. on your roster, you can just use them in. You can plug them in wherever you All want. All right, who would be your who would be your? Obviously, we would pick Kipchoge because of like he's really good and great. But who would be like? It's not based off of performance. You just want to have this person always at the Olympics. In what event? The marathon? Any event. 
Well, some of the, like you'd want Hassan, but she's not because you never know what she's going to do. But those, you know, she's going to make the team. Like that's not, that's not hard. I think uh, it would be cool. Each country should get one to, wild card pick. Yeah. Yeah. They send to the Olympics. Or, or if you already have three in. If you have, if you have the best three in any event, <laughs> you get the wild card. You get to send a fourth. Or you get Fan to, vote. or the world record holder, the active world record holder gets to always be in the event. So Bolt always gets to run the 100. He can still run like a 10-1 or 10-2. Yeah. But until his world record is broken, he's forever allowed to run at the Olympics. He can show up. Oh, so yeah. you'll have like an, an 80-year-old who still has the world record and whatever just out there doing whatever event they have the world record in. Wouldn't that be cool? Just Masters. see like 65-year-old like world record holder in the triple jump just be like, oh, I'm not making up an event. It would work for like obvious people who are young, but it would be funny to see old world record holders. You get to celebrate them like, here we go. Look, he clearly, this is a hard record because of how old he is. Because he hasn't think, been broken yet. I think right now, it's a pretty clear top three for Kenya, for the men. But it'll get more complicated in the fall. And then we don't know what they're going to take into account in the early part of 2023. Does someone do something in Tokyo? I just think these things always end up getting more complicated than you'd hope. Unless you have a trials type race, which, which they don't have. The other result I want to mention before we move on, uh, Mo Farah. Gets ninth, runs uh, 210.28. He was the third uh, British man across the line. Said afterwards, he's got his final races planned out, and his last one will be the Great North Run coming up in a couple months. So end of an era for Farah. Got his London sign off, but he's going to do a couple more road races in the UK before he calls it a career. He's 40 years old now. Hell of a career. It yeah. does seem weird, though. Like, when's the last time Mo Farah was relevant? Like, like winning-wise? 2017, I guess? Well, 17. And then there was just this, there was this move to the marathon. But he was always better at the track. So he, Isn't and, that weird, though, that he really kind of retired in 2017? And he's had, like, six years of... I'm still... A professional runner who's doing it, mixing it up with the big guys. Well, Maybe no, he had some good five, two or six. He had some good performances, but like, it's oh. kind of it's a six year retirement. Let's be honest, it's a six year retirement. I mean, he won he won Chicago in twenty eighteen. So let's calm. I was talking about on the track. Okay, but, in twenty eighteen, that's one year either. So it's a five year retirement. Twenty nineteen, twenty nineteen, he was fifth in London, eighth in Chicago. Twenty twenty, obviously, that was bad. For everybody. Uh, yeah, that's where he got that one-hour record, though. 2021. That's where we saw the, uh, the drop-off, right? Couldn't get the... Yeah, no, but he was, like... He was trying to get the qualifying times. Same thing into a 20, on, the, on the track and couldn't do it. It just went from... He's like... He's, he's still winning gold on the track to he's going he's to try the marathon. Oh, hey, he's pretty good at the marathon. But there's also this Kipchoge guy out there and all these other people out there. This is going to be hard to, to, to match them. And then it just, and then very quickly it went to, oh, 10,000, he's not the same guy anymore. And then, oh, Marathon is gone too. And then there was nothing there. So I like that he gave it a shot. I like that he tried to squeeze everything oh, yeah, out of sure. it. He mentioned that, he, you know, he just can't do the same things. And he thought, he was disappointed with his race on Sunday in the post race. He thought he could run a quicker time. He had, I don't think he had any illusions that he could win, but he was like, look, this guy's out here running 201. But I still think, 210 in a race where you he he went for it like he he wasn't I mean he was off the pack off the pack but I mean what was he halfway he was 6338 at halfway like he wasn't just running he wasn't running just to finish so I I don't think he wants to hang around though and run a bunch of 210s cuz he's been to the top yeah. of the sport he, if he's going to stick around he wants to be competitive I think because of training and everything he still thought okay man you probably plotted it out a year or two ago 2023, I'll still have one more shot to get one. Didn't work out, but he went for it. And I think we always were waiting for the resolution of the career. And what, what's tough is sometimes the resolution of the career happens before the athlete is able to acknowledge it, um, which, is, which is tough. And then before you know it, they're on the fringes of the sport. And they never got like the, 
the our fans even never got the knowledge of like this is it. This is my last big championship. I'm going for it and I can win and this is my yeah. send off. This was sort of this landed in the middle ground, I thought, between that because we knew this is coming to the end. He still was with the elite field. He belonged in the elite field, but he's not he's not the same guy he was. He's 40 years old now. Yeah. And now he goes gets to go off on 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 his own terms. Hell of an A block. Just crushed it. Absolutely crushed, crushed the A block. It's Colt, man. Colt's producing Colt's high producing level today. A block. The T. All right. right. Penn, Gordon, your forte. Write down some of these races for us. Um, let's start with we did the sprints on Friday. So we did a college men, college women sprints. Give us a lay of the land there. What we're going to do, we're going to go through college women. We're going to talk about 4x8, 4x15, and distance medley for the, for the women. Then we'll do the same thing for the men, and then we'll loop back in and talk about the pro field. So run us through these fields. Uh, any particular athletes you're watching for? Any records that are vulnerable? Any rivalries or matchups that you're particularly excited about on the women's collegiate side for Penn? So we'll start with the 4 by 8 women's side. I'm excited. We'll, this is going to be something I say for both the men and the women. But I'm really excited about the um, participation of Oklahoma State. They have a really good men's and women's team. Women's team's a little bit under the radar. They have very good you know, middle distance athletes in that 800. So I'm excited to see Oklahoma State go up against Penn State. Penn State, the defending champs. Um, Villanova is the team that has owned the event. They've won 14 times. They're also in this race, but it's really going to come down to Penn State, Oklahoma State, Washington, Washington, Carly Thomas, Sophie O'Sullivan, O'Sullivan, very good. Washington, we'll talk about them when we get to the DMR, but ultimately it's going to come down to, you know, I think it's probably going to be a two, trying to do quick math, probably going to be about 820 type race, 820, 821. So, you're gambling. Pick the over under. Take the under of eight twenty one, in mm. my opinion. All right, moving on. Women's four by fifteen. Women's four by fifteen. Now, we don't have the Arkansas versus NC State. We thought we would get Arkansas decided to go to Drake relays and NC State. Um, they're just not putting together a relay. They've been running um, individual events. Caitlin Tui actually made her season debut. She ran a four. Was it 408, 1500 uh, this past weekend and then like jogged a 5K? So no Tui. So no Tui mania. But like I said, we still have Oklahoma State. Taylor Rowe in this race. Um, Jeb Curry of Oklahoma State here. And then Notre Dame, Olivia Markievicz. Markievicz. She's one to watch. She has a phenomenal kick. I think this is not going to be a chasing national record, chasing Penn Relay's record. But we're going to have a really fast anchor. And I think Taylor Rowe versus Markevich versus maybe a Kaylee DeLay. Going to have some very fast 1,500-meter runners anchoring. So look for uh, everyone's kind of chilling. And then the final leg, kind of quick 1,500 between the top dogs. And then last, women's DMR, Stanford. They're coming mm. here. They're going all in on the DMR. We saw what they did on the indoor season with Willis and Whitaker. Mm -hmm. They have a great DMR. There's That's the same team. Other teams here. The team the listed team. is the same yeah. team. Yeah, they have other competition here. That's like they're not by themselves. Like Oklahoma State can run really well with Taylor Rowe. Notre Dame, like I mentioned, Markovich. They are going to be challenged, and I think the outdoor record is thousand percent in reach. We see how fast these women's DMRs have running indoors. Outdoor record's only 1048. That's going to that's gonna get demolished. And it'd be interesting to see what these Stanford women do. Whitaker and Willis, they're going to have phenomenal splits. That's the only event that they're entered in, both men and women, is the women's DMR. There are how many relays? There are like 18 relays. Mm -hmm. And the entire University of Stanford has chosen one. And the one they chose was the women's DMR. So there's a reason for it. They're here for that. They're here for, to get one wheel and one wheel only. And, that's, and also, Whitaker has some history running at the Penn Relay, so that's probably why they're coming too. They're like, hey, coach, do you mind like, <laughs> booking a flight 
across the country to Philadelphia. I want to so, run a race. And like, all right, I guess so. At NC's, you mentioned indoors. Stanford won. Notre Dame was third in that race. The, the battle between Stanford and Arkansas. Remember with Lauren Gregory cl- closing yeah. down. But Notre Dame was only a couple seconds back. So watch them. And as you mentioned, Oklahoma State with Markezich, Rowe, and Whitaker on the anchor. That could be that could be really good. Stanford, though, having Willis, eight hundred meter champion, as, as 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 a trump card is pretty good. Like I don't know, they're going to get the lead. So this could look an awful lot like indoors again, where Whitaker, if she anchors, which she's listed on there right now, she's going to be running with a lead. So it'll just be a matter of can she hold on to that lead? Gonna be fast. Keep in mind the name. The names that are on the star list aren't 100% certain. A lot of times coaches put them in. So we're not 100% sure we're going to get these four women. Uh, but odds are Stanford's not going to send a B team. They're going to send their A team. Yeah. Like, that would be a hell of a, a, a conversation with your athletic director. Yeah, so we're going to send like our JV squad across the country to go run at one of the most prestigious relay events. Okay, yeah, yeah it makes sense. Get some good training in. Yeah. Good luck, guys. <laughs> It'll be exciting. All right, moving over to the men, starting with the 4 by 8 It is national record watch, 708-96, held by Arizona State. They split 147, 147, 148, 145. So basically a 146-ish average mm-hmm. to get it, 708-96. And there are multiple teams that could do it. Uh, ultimately, though, it's going to be Iowa State who has the closest shot. I don't see listed on here. Um, they are one athlete who is a transfer from Miami, Ohio. Finley McClear. Name. Yeah, yeah, McClear. He's not there, but maybe he'll make his debut. So we'll find that out. But they still have great 800-meter guys. They have a bunch of guys who've run 146s, 147s. So they have the depth. Iowa State going to be eyeing that win and maybe even the Penn Relays record or even the NCAA record. Ole Miss, Washington, also in the mix. Washington is interesting. Washington is only coming to run, I believe, the four by mile and four by eight. Mm-hmm. They kind of have the same guys entered in both. I don't think they're running the same guys because they have some 800 meter specialists and mile specialists. So Washington is kind of the dark horse in my opinion here. Ole Miss, they kind of lost a lot of turnover from last year, but they still have some Great 800 meter runners. It's all going to be about Iowa State. They're another team like Oklahoma State. They chose to not go to Drake for the first time in a long time and come to Penn Relays. And uh, they're going to be exciting to watch. All right. Which moves us to the. Let's do your DMR. The four by mile. mile. Let's do four by mile. Gordon's been waiting for this for 360 days now. If there's one thing Gordon's passionate about, it's about a sub 16 four by mile. I've been wanting a sub-16 4x-mile since I started, first started at Flow Track. And every year, I do this little exercise. I go on TFERS, and I see everyone's mile PB from indoor season. And I see how many teams can put together an average that's under three fifty. That's under four minutes. Like, you can have a sum of sub-16. And every year, there are like five to six teams that can do it. Mm-hmm. And I'm always like, it's possible. These teams have four sub four milers. We should be able to see a sub 16 four by mile at the collegiate level. We've yeah. seen it internationally, obviously with Ireland. This is a world record, I believe it's 15, 49 or something like that. Mm-hmm. We just haven't seen it with the college kids. And it's because they just, for some reason or another, they're just not all on the same page and they don't put it together at the right moment. We've seen it come close. We've seen Oregon run 1603 in 2009. We've seen Michigan run 1605 in 2005. Uh, at the pen relays. But now we have all of the planets aligned. This was the year of the mile. Everyone and their mom, it was so much the year of the mile that the people who tracked the mile stopped tracking the mile because it's like sub four <laughs> means nothing. The reason they say it means nothing is because there are like 12 teams here who could break 16. 12. <laughs> 12 of them could break 16. But ultimately, Washington is the team that can really break it. They could break 1530 if they wanted to. We'll see if they do it. 1530? Yeah. Wow. You sure? Yeah. What okay. is fifteen thirty? It's pretty fast. That's that's seven 
0.5 seconds. So that's yeah. 352.5. All right, keep going. They have th four guys who are going 352.5. They did it. They had like a bunch of guys going 350, 351. Anyway, they're not going to break 1530. I'm not saying that's going to happen. But we're going to see this. It's going to happen. I'm putting all the positive energy into it. I'm just not even about previewing this event. We know the teams to watch. Georgetown, Wisconsin, Villanova, Virginia, Oklahoma State, and ultimately Washington. Washington wasn't going to come to this meet. They're coming to this meet for one reason and one reason only. And it's not to win. It's to please me and let me see a <laughs> sub-16 minute four by mile for the first time in my life. Then I can die and retire and go off into sunset saying yeah. I saw it. I yeah, saw yeah. a sub-16 four by mile. Washington, they have you know six to seven guys who can all do it. We're not sure who's going to be in it, but most likely Wascom and Hauser, two of the top guys, will be there. Um, and then Oklahoma State will challenge them. That's what you need. You need Oklahoma State in the mix to challenge Washington to keep them moving. And uh, we'll see what happens. So what are you I'm gonna, going with? What? Go ahead. No, sorry. Go ahead. I stepped on what the you say? No, no. Go. I have nothing. You're about to make a pick. Make a pick. Oh, pick is Washington. Okay. What I was going to say is what, you, pick is Iowa State. what are you going to do if the first leg don't, don't, is at 309 don't. through three laps? Are you just going to... Are you going to cry? Like, what's going to, are you going to leave? Are you going to close your eyes? What are you going to do? If the first three laps is 309, mm -hmm. I, I probably am going to like walk out of the okay. stadium. But here's the thing it'll be too much for you to handle. <laughs> I also might be like, well, they do have a 352 anchor. Like, yeah, I guess they could maybe, there's a possibility. You know, if, if they get the baton at, you know, 1207. I'll be like, maybe the guy runs 352. That's what we were doing last we year with it. Oliver Hoare when the pro on had the, the team. We're like, I yeah. don't know. Oliver Hoare is really good. Maybe. Maybe. So It's just it's so hard to keep it on schedule. It's so hard to keep it on schedule the entire it time. Is. You need it. Because Milers just want to kick. That's what they want to do. I should, Otherwise, it would be Milers. Stand, I should stand at the corral where all the athletes are coming through oh. and like fist pump, like do it for me, do it for me. You got yeah. this. I believe in you. Just like be very positive. They need to watch There's, the women's four by 15 from last year. Don't watch the men's four by mile from last year or yeah. really any men's four by mile. Any, I mean, find the Irish one if you can. Don't watch any of the other ones. It's not how to do it. Go, 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 go. And then uh, men's DMR, Oklahoma State, they're, they're heavy favorites, but you know, Villanova's, Wisconsin, Ole Miss, Indiana, Michigan, Virginia, Georgetown, they all can mix it up. But Oklahoma State bringing in the guy who I think has the best, one of the, one of the better kicks in the NCAA. No, you said the Brian best. Brian Fay has the best. No, because oh, Brian changed Fay, it? I just made a, well, we said Brian Fay has the best kick in the YouTube title, so I have to keep that, right? Maybe? Well, I know, but Masawi used to, oh, I guess you had a question mark after it. Yeah. Okay. Masa so number yeah, two. I put a question mark. Number two kick. Yeah, number yeah. two kick. In the nation. Gotcha. So I'm excited, though. Oklahoma State versus Washington. They're going to be battling each other in the, in the four by mile. And then Oklahoma State's going to be battling Iowa State in the four by eight. And then Oklahoma State's going to be battling basically Ole Miss, Wisconsin in the DMR. Should be fun. All right. I'm going to run through some of these pro fields, the Olympic development fields. Uh, let's start first with the men. Um, the mile features some athletes that were at Penn Relays. Uh, last year, as a matter of fact. Um, you had Jordy Beamish, you have Mario Garcia Romo, who anchored Ole Miss's squad to victory in one of the most exciting races of the meet. Festus Legat, Eric Holt, Joe Klecker in there as well. So that men, men's mock should be pretty good. I mean, you got two guys, uh, three guys in there from on in Beamish, Garcia Romo, and Klecker. Beamish and Garcia Romo, I mean, Garcia Romo's world's finalist. He's run really fast times. Beamish, we saw him do the steeple a couple weeks back. I'm curious to see what, what they do in this race. But a lot of guys with the capability to run fast and someone like Klecker, who if he's in it, he can, he can keep that pace moving along. Um, high hurdles. All the Eagles fans out there, including yourself, be looking at Devin Allen. This could be, this could be a pretty good race to Orlando Brennett uh, from Jamaica, Rafael Pereira, uh, solid as well too. I, it was just a fun moment last year having Allen there in front of the crowd. Uh, I think 
the reception will be probably even bigger for him this year, correct? Because now he's gone through a whole season. Yeah. My question, so Devin Allen is kind of like one of the fringe last roster spots at the wide receiver level. He's like the top practice squad guy, but has yet to break through into 53-man roster. The NFL draft is the same weekend, mm -hmm. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. What will make Devin run faster? Would it be the Eagles drafting a bunch of wide receivers and him realizing, uh-oh, I'm... Uh, I might need to focus on this track thing because they're trying to kick me off the team or them not drafting any wide receivers. And he's thinking, Hey, I got my football to fall back on I'm just <laughs> cruise through these hurdles. So I think we'll be able to know how he's going to do based on the number of wide receivers. I'd say if they draft interesting two analysis or more wide receivers, he's going to run a world leading time. If they draft one or less wide receivers, he's going to run like 13, three. Nobody can accuse That's you of enough. underthinking something, Gordon. I'll say that. He's going to be watching. How would you feel if, if like, all of a sudden, Flo Track just hired, like, a bunch of podcasters? Kevin, wouldn't you get worried? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm perpetually worried. You don't have to tell me I, that. I, like, phone Looking in the over next your podcast. Shoulder. Be like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Well, you could, yeah, you could take it two ways. On the women's side of the Olympic development field, where should we go here? Let's start first with that, that 600. You have Ajay Wilson coming back. She ran the six last year in that race won by a Thing Mo. But with her, Natoya Ghoul, Sage Herta Klecker, um, not to mention, you know, Sophia Gararian in there. That one is gonna be that one's gonna be fun. And you could have three world championship finalists in the 800 in that one field. I think that'll be really good. Ghoul obviously likes to push the pace, likes to go to the front. Wilson, she used to do that. Now she's a bit more adaptable can play off of others and, and Herta Klecker has been running really well. I think that'll be, uh, that'll be a good one. Um, women's eight, Olivia Baker, Allie Wilson, Danny Jones, Michaela Meyer, Aaliyah Miller, Johnson, Bergson, and Acosta in there. And then let's see, what was the other one I want? Oh, 1500. Uh, Josette Andrews, you have uh, Sintu Vesa in there, the former Ole Miss runner, uh, Anna Bennett, Aisha Pratt, uh, Gabby Jennings, is there an Olympic development race that you're most excited about other than the high hurdles for the men? Uh, the Olympic development corporate DMR. Oh, I'm looking didn't mention that. that. Yeah, let me pull that up. Wait, can I get that? Uh, I'll put it here in the chat. So these are the teams we got. Uh, oh, here's corporate. Oh, here we go. So you got on, on, and they're not using... Jordy Beamish or Morgan McDonald or anybody. They got Toyota. <laughs> How funny it would be if they did, though. They're like, we're going to bring in the big gun. Yeah, on Toyota, GE, ExxonMobil, Merck, Susquehanna, Vanguard, Independence, another on team, KPMG, Price Waterhouse Coopers, all four, Fox Chase Cancer Center, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia Critical Care, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia Cardiac Team, Penn Behavior Ooh, who Challenge. Who do you like there? You like, are you... Leaning critical care or cardiac team? Well, that's an age-old rivalry, Gordon, that goes back decades, <laughs> and its roots are in med school. Uh, I would go critical care. But okay, when we'll these two race, when these two race, throw out the records. Anything can happen. Throw out the PRs. Uh, Penn Behavior Change for Good Institute, AstraZeneca, Global Medical, USLI, a AON, I don't know that one, Interpros. Uh, Aramark, Harlem Children's Zone, Evergreen Theragnostics, Vanguard B, Merck B, Global Medical B, Price Waterhouse Cooper B, Vanguard C. <laughs> so, strong investment there if you're going to bet on Vanguard. All right. I mean, obviously, On is the favorites because they work for a company that makes athletic gear, but ExxonMobil and Toyota and GE, they make things that run cars that go a lot faster than feet. So I well, think Exxon I might Mobil have to go make with cars. Well, they make gas that powers cars. <laughs> they make the gas. Interesting. Yeah, they make the uh, gas. I'm, uh, <laughs> Thank here you. we go. Last year, On won it. 11.05. Merck was second in 11.21. Yeah, On's going to win. It's all about the... Ch you're, you're, everyone's chasing for the podium. It's all about the second, third place. Yeah, so they had Kilgore, Guyat, DeCoker, who's like the CEO, and then Donnelly, who's a really good Ooh. runner. Merck, they have a good... Uh, women's runner Elizabeth Chikatas. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we yeah. 
Let's see if Ons are on the same team. Donnelly, Guya, yeah. Oh, wait, they have one, one change on their squad. But three of the four uh -oh. for, from Ons championship team are listed. All right. Well, that's we'll it. We'll Kevin, see. we titled this podcast a little bit of bait and switch because we have yet to talk about the headline of this podcast. The headline know, of this podcast it took, was... It took a long time. Sorry. It took a long time, but we're here. So if you're still with us, thank you. A high schooler beat Noah Lyles, Kevin. A high schooler. And it wasn't like a Noah Lyles jogging like in a weird win situation, running 10-2, doesn't matter. Lyles ran well. If this, if this high schooler wasn't present in this race, you'd be like, oh, Lyles <laughs> looking good, getting ready yep. to... Go for that double gold. But now that he throw in, like, it results in a loss to this high schooler, it just blows your mind in multiple directions. It makes you think about what is Lyle's going to do when it comes down to August. How good can this kid from Florida really be? Is he a, a potential to even make a, a global team mm -hmm. and run it in August? Out, straight out of high school. We saw Arian Knighton run pretty well out of high school. He was able to do it, so it's we've seen it. We can't just say, like, hey, you're too young for it yet because Knighton is winning medals at a teenage years. Well, he yeah. was Knighton, Knighton was doing it before, even, like, younger. Knighton was, was yeah. on the scene. So, Isama Singa is a senior. He's, he's 18, but he goes 983 with a plus 2.6. Nobody in high schools run faster under all conditions. The wind legal record, of course, is that 10 flat from Trentavis Friday. But yeah, you just see him in a pro field and you see him beating Noah Lyles in a race where Lyles is going for it and Lyles himself didn't run that poorly. He ran 992. I'm probably wandering faster given the, the tailwinds there, but it wasn't just him. I mean, Kendall Williams is a legitimate professional runner and Asinga got the win. Remember, he ran really fast at Florida Relays as well. He's scheduled to go to Texas A&M. That's where he's committed to. He runs for Montverde. Academy in Florida. I read an article with him in Track and Field News where it talked about you know, which country is he going to represent because um, one, both of his parents are Olympians. Fun story. Uh, one, from Zan one for Zambia, one for Suriname, and also, obviously, the U.S. is, is an option for him. Uh, so in the article, it said he hadn't decided as of, the, as of the printing of the article, so I'm not sure if that's changed. But put all that aside, I want to see him run again i want to see him in another pro field against even more professional runners like don't don't just stop with noah lyles like who else can he go toe to toe with because he certainly looks like the future and it is funny from lyles's perspective it's like you have Knighton, teenager and then now a singa uh, a teenager but listen it's not just lyles who's gonna have to try to beat this this guy <laughs> it's it's all the men's hundred runners in the u.s who are gonna have to beat this guy because 983 93 gets the job done. Yeah. And yes, it's windy, but it's not really that windy. It's 2.6. This isn't like a 4.0 win or a 3.5, 2.6. It's, it's arguably, a, I believe, I'm not, I didn't do conversions, but it converts to, I think, a 9.8 high. I bet it converts to like 9.89 no, maybe. It's nine, no, it's 9.9 nine mid or something like that. It adds like a tenth, basically. Yeah, no, but does it Whatever, that's who cares? It goes, we don't need to spend it adds a, a long time. It goes doing... to 0.0 win, not 2.0 win. Yeah, but okay, and then what is it at 1.6? We don't need to spend a lot of time playing with the wind calculator. He won. He beat Noel Lyles. That's the most important yes. thing. They both ran the same conditions. He beat the 200 meter world champion who has the record, the American record in the 200. That's what happened in yeah. the race. I saw it. I watched the video. Fair enough. So thank, he's, you. thank you for correct. He's ready to compete right now. It's not a hypothetical, how will he do? And it's not a, be one thing if he ran this race. In, in just like high school only meet, and you're like, okay, well, how is he going to handle lining up, putting his blocks down next to somebody who's an Olympic champ? We already know that. Now, it, it, the yeah. pressure is just going to increase from here because more people are going to talk about him, and it's going to get harder because the meets are going to get higher and higher stakes. But he handily beat an, an Olympian, a, a, Olympic cha a world champion. Seems pretty yeah. definitive oh, what we're looking at here. I would want to know what Lyles' thoughts are on it. Because do you think he was surprised? Do you think he was like, wait a minute. I, this isn't, 
you're not supposed to be here. You're not yeah. supposed to be where I am right now, like 50 meters into this race. Oh, I'm going to catch. Wait, why am I not catching you? Like, what's going on? Yeah. It's Listen, probably confusing and, for everyone, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and you don't know how the rest of the season is going to go for him. Obviously, he's in high school, but this is not a traditional high school setup. So would think he's going to continue to. Yeah, I don't think he peaked for this meet at the end of April. People always say, like, oh, they're on two different schedules. But I don't think someone at this level, and he's he hasn't run this fast, but People have known his name for a while now. I don't think he was circling the end of April as as the high point of his season. I think the expectation is he's going to be competing uh, long into the summer. Okay, Kevin, I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions, five questions, and you got they're yes or no questions, and you just have to say yes or no, and you have to be correct because if you're wrong, not good. You got to be right. All right. Yeah. First question: Does he break the win legal? Uh, U20 record, which is 991. Is that Tobogo? Yeah. Yes. This year? Okay. Yes. Next question. Does he run in a Texas A&M uniform in 2024? Oof. I'll say yes. I'll say yes. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Does he have a lane on the track in Budapest in 2023? Yes. Yes? Yeah. Last question. What are you doing this weekend? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, what, Pen Relays. <laughs> Pen Relays. What do you, this isn't a yes or no question, but mm -hmm. do you think that he runs for the US? Oh, I don't know. I mean, that, that I don't want to guess. I have no idea. I don't I I read the article uh, about him. And, and it mentioned the three possibilities and he hadn't committed. So I, I have no idea. Um, what do you think on a four by four split in? <laughs> Should he move up to the 400? Gordon's next question. What do you thought about the 400 hurdles? You want to do yeah, that? Yeah. I just, yeah. I, again, it's just, if it was just the time and not the, res, not the win, then it's one thing. But it, it's, it's who you beat too. That's ultimately what the sport's about is, Beating the person next to you, and that's that's. Beat a guy in his prime, peak yeah. prime. Noel Owls is no one else you could argue he sh is better for him to beat than Noel Owls. Yeah, you could say Noel isn't a perfect hundred meter runner, but not. He's trying to win the hundred meter gold this year, so. Right, that's that's what I. Lyles doesn't seem like the type of guy to go into races and not try. Yeah, he likes to win. All right. Yeah, actual random Last. stuff. Did he say a lane in the final? No, Gordon did not say a lane in the final. He just said a lane at, in yeah. Budapest, which is why I, I yes. definitively said yes. Uh, some people are saying conversion 995 with zero win would be like 985 with two. Only game says 995. Thomas says 992. Okay, so if you're saying this was worth... I'm, the only reason I'm bringing it up is because your question about whether or not he's going to break... Was it 991 to Bogo's record? Yeah. So, so let's just say let's just say that was 995 and zero, and zero zero. He's gonna run in some meets later on in the year where, unless there's just bizarre weather, the it's gonna cooperate because he's gonna be in big stadiums and the weather's gonna get blocked yeah. out and you're not gonna have that many illegal wins. So, do I think he could run four one hundredths of a second faster, con conversion wise later on in the year? Yeah, I think he can. I think he'll get it. Last uh, story. Uh, Shrika Jackson, still very fast in the 100. 1082 uh, into a minus 0.1 for you wind watchers out there. Should run some 400s. We talked about, hmm, maybe there's some interest there in the quarter. But her last one wasn't as fast as her first one. And then this, uh, this, this mark answers all questions with the 1082. Last year, uh, she's run 11 flats, but now she's already at 1082. Hobbs had that uh, world lead previously with a 1089. So Jackson, I don't think it's because Shelly Ann is so good. And because uh, Elaine Thompson hurrah has been so good. It seems weird that you'd be like, yeah, but there's also Sharika Jackson who could win it. But because Sharika Jackson was so good in the two and also a medalist in the one, I don't feel like it's crazy to say she could win gold, do you? I don't think it would be no. a huge, uh, yeah, not a huge upset. One thing I just realized while we were 
you were talking about Sharika Jackson. I was like kind of overreacting to her like lack of fast 400. Remember when she didn't run a fast 400 two weeks ago or something like that? And we're like, oh, dang. Yeah, but that was after she ran a here? fast one. She ran a fast one and then a not yeah. that fast one. Yeah. We thought we were getting a faster one. And you're like, oh, what's going on? And now, and she, yeah, now 1082 in April. She's ready to go. Shelly Ann's going to make her debut soon, I believe, either next week or the week after. So mm-hmm. we're going to start seeing what the Jamaica contingent has up in their, up their sleeves in 2023. Should be exciting. Speaking of Shrika Jackson, though, did you know that she ran at age 14 at the Penn Relays, anchoring mm. her high school team's 4 by one to the victory? 14 years old. 14. There's a video of it on our YouTube channel, so check it out. We've been no. uploading some uh, throwback Jamaicans before they were famous uh, races from Penn Relays. We have one of Shelly and Fraser Price. <laughs> the, the video quality is very granular because there was no broadcast footage of it. It's just... Ryan Fenton with a handy cam from the stands, just filming Shelly Ann run into a 4.0 headwind mm-hmm. to win in like 11.8. And then four months later, she wins the Olympic gold. Yeah. It's kind of fun. So that's why it's fun. Yeah. Penn Relays, you watch these Jamaican high schools, there's going to be one or two runners that you're not going to know. And then five years from now, you're going to be like, wait a minute. They were there? Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, well, and, and you take for granted – so let's take Fraser Price. You just know her as a champion now, but she made a big jump up and in an 08. That was a surprise because you look at her time she was running, Penn included, even though it was into a big old headwind. But oh man, like a surprise win. But that's how it started. And that's how it starts for a lot of these athletes. It's like, oh man, they came out of nowhere. And then a very select few of them continue to improve and continue to um, win golds and make teams. But yeah, you, you never know who's going to come out of it. Basically, and then you look back. I mean, that Fraser Price race is fifteen years ago now, <laughs> and she was wow. in college. She was in college it wasn't even the high school section. The, the Sharika one was high school, right? Fair Tech. Yeah, yeah. Fourteen years old. Yeah, there it is. Check out, Colt's got check it. out this footage. Put it up. Colt's got look, it. Look at Colt cooking. Yeah, Mister Colt finding the clip. Handy cam footage here. Give me one sec. So she was anchoring. Is oh yeah, nine anchor. Uh yeah, oh nine anchor. Fourteen years old. What's gonna find it? Yeah. Show it to people. Here we go. Let him cook. He's got it. So this is not her. You can't tell who's who because it's <laughs> just just wait till we to, get to the anchor. You'll leg. be able to tell by the end. <laughs> yeah. 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 It is funny though when you see it, like, oh I guess that could be. Sharika Jackson, when you look kind of closer, 14-year-old Sharika, makes sense. Yeah, Fraser Price, I could definitely tell, was... was yeah, her. so they're an outside lane. So it's the outside lane that wins. Dude, spoilers. Green, oh, man. Green, sorry. There's Sharika. Boom. Handoff. Ooh. Dust. Ooh. There we go. Gotta get, gotta get around that curve. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Now she's rolling. Pulls away. Look at that. Yeah, the Fraser Price one... Watch the pen she was in the, that college section. It was 11-4 or something. Veer Tech represent. 45-10. Solid squad. All right. That's the pod. Hell of a yeah. pod, Colt. Hell of a run, Colt. Great we run. love you. We talked about Kipchoge's longevity. What about Colt? Made it. Colt did way more shows than Kipchoge ran marathons. That's true. I just want to bring that all up. Right. Way more. And, maybe as many <laughs> if you add up all of Kipchoge's races maybe Colt probably exceeded that in terms of podcasts maybe yeah or, time running too we've done a lot of marathons maybe I've done more marathons it's true yeah is- marathon watch parties versus Ch- Kipchoge marathon finishes <laughs> pretty even uh, we're going to be off because I'm yeah, traveling man. on Wednesday and then uh, Friday will be at Penn, so we won't be back until Monday. But yeah, your yeah your head to head record against Kipchoge is pretty good too, Colt. All right, Colt. Oh, he's already gone. Colt, 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 Colt left. Colt's out. Colt's he's like, like I'm my, out. My, it's over. <laughs> we passed the hour yeah, mark. I'm off the clock. No, oh. <laughs> he's off the clock. Ah, <laughs> uh, that was a good bit, Colt. I thought you were actually gone. That would have been funny. Just the stream never ends. We just got to figure out how to. Yeah, we just we can never no. turn it on. Um, yeah. All right. Colt, good run. People can Venmo you. Um. <laughs>
been an honor, folks. Well, uh, I might show up again eventually if they yes. get desperate. Yes. You never say never. You never say never. Well, there'll be a Colt, Kevin, Gordon reunion. We've, never, we've only seen each other in real life once, all together, twice maybe. I think it's twice, but but okay. yeah. We'll get, a, we'll get another to... one. Yeah, we could post a picture on, the, on our Twitter page there or something. Go. Hey, look, it's Colt, Kevin, and Gordon. Thank you, Colt, for all your hard work. Uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, coverage of the pen relays it's it's ongoing we'll have a lot of previews stuff up we'll have some some videos from on the ground when we get out there on wednesday and then of course all the action starts on thursday and goes through saturday so we'll talk to you guys soon next time gordon and i will be together we'll be at franklin field so we'll see you then talk to you guys next week bye